Have you ever been running a race or a workout, feeling strong, running faster than you ever have before, and you start to think about how great it's gonna feel when you cross that finish line with your big PR. But suddenly, your body starts to shut down. You hit the wall hard, and you can barely move your legs. Every step is like trying to bring your legs out of the mud, and your legs go numb or even start tingling. So what happened? Well, you've probably heard people throwing around the word lactic acid as the cause of all the end of your race pain and struggle. It's been blamed for fatigue, soreness, overtraining, and probably more. But until recently, the phenomenon of lactic, acid, lactic accumulation during intense exercise was poorly misunderstood. Today, we're gonna to dispel some of the myths about lactate and threshold, how to avoid lactic acid buildup while running, and how you can prevent fatigue while improving your lactate clearance. So how does lactic acid or lactate actually work? Lactate or lactic acid as it is commonly known gets a bad rap thanks to some faulty science from the 1970s. While an excess accumulation of lactate contributes to why runners slow down at the end of a race, lactic acid itself isn't responsible for the muscle fatigue that causes you to do the skeleton dance at the end of the race. In fact, lactate is actually a source of energy. As you probably already know, your body breaks down glucose for energy, and a byproduct of this process is lactate. But for each lactate molecule produced by the body, one hydrogen ion is also formed. Hydrogen ions lower the blood pH and make the muscles acidic. During easy running, your body reconverts and recycles this lactate back into energy through the glucose cycle and carries away hydrogen ions with it. Therefore, the production of lactate and the clearance of hydrogen will remain relatively constant while running at an easy aerobic pace, which doesn't require a huge demand for energy. As you continue to run faster and demand more energy, the production of lactic acid will slowly increase. At some point, whether it's been too fast a pace or holding a steady pace for too long, the production of lactic acid will soar and your body will no longer be able to convert lactate back into energy. At this point, lactate can't grab its hydrogen ion to reduce the concentration of hydrogen in the muscle. And this acidity irritates the muscle nerve endings and causes that pain, heaviness, and burning mistakenly attributed to lactic acid. So why did we used to think that lactic acid was bad for us? Early psychologists studied the origins of muscular fatigue using electric impulses sent to the muscles from dis dissected frogs. Even these dismembered muscles fatigued after a while, proving that there's a chemical component to fatigue. When these muscle fibers are analyzed, they show a high concentration of lactate and acid, the hydrogen ions. Therefore, physiologists concluded that the reason for muscular fatigue during exercise is accumulation of a compound called lactic acid. This theory remained more or less unchallenged for much of the 20th century. It was only after the body's energy supply systems were subjected to rigorous biomechanical accounting that some discrepancies started to turn up. For one thing, the body doesn't actually produce lactic acid, just the one negatively charged ion, lactate. Acid, or hydrogen ions, are indeed produced, but not from the same exact biomechanical step. Furthermore, the ratio of lactate to hydrogen ions produced during exercise isn't one-to-one, -one, as you would expect if lactic acid was being produced. These ambiguities led to a re-examination and eventual overhaul of a lactate paradigm in the early 2000s, spearheaded by Roger Robergs. So what does lactate actually do? Robergs, an accomplished biochemist, took a look at each step in the metabolic process that turns sugars, glucose in the blood, and glycogen in the muscles into energy when you exercise. Most runners have heard the following story about energy pathways. Aerobic respiration turns sugars into fuel using oxygen and doesn't have any harmful byproducts. Anaerobic respiration, which doesn't kick in until you're operating past your aerobic limit, can generate energy from sugar without using oxygen, but results in waste products, lactate and lactic acid. Rolbergs and others showed that this is common misunderstanding and has some flaws. It turns out that anaerobic respiration functions all the time, turning sugar into a compound called pyruvate, releasing some hydrogen ions at the same time. Aerobic respiration works to clean up the pyruvate using oxygen to burn the pyruvate into carbon dioxide and water, which can be exhaled. The aerobic process also consumes acid or hydrogen ions, which retards the buildup of acid in the muscles. The generation of lactate is actually a side reaction. When excess pyruvate and acid start to accumulate, 
when the rate of anaerobic respiration overtakes the aerobic system's ability to remove the waste, the body uses pyruvate molecule and a hydrogen ion to create lactate, another way in which it can slow down the buildup of acid. The lactate can also be shuttled out of the muscles, into the blood, and burned in other areas of the body for more energy. So how can I prevent lactate from slowing me down? All this biochemistry might be interesting to physiologists, but what about the rest of us who just want to know how to stop it from happening in the future? We can take a few lessons right, from the, right off the bat. First is develop your aerobic system. Your aerobic strength is a huge factor in your performance. While your body has various mechanisms to buffer at the acid produced during high intensity efforts, all of these are limited. Only increasing your aerobic fitness will allow you to substantially increase how far and how fast you can run. So how do you increase your aerobic capacity? Well, you run lots of miles at a slow pace. Check the comments below for an easy run and aerobic pace calculator that will quickly help you determine your optimal aerobic building pace. The second step is to run your tempo or threshold runs correctly. Understanding that lactate plays a greater role than simply causing fatigue allows you to understand the place of high intensity workouts or workouts at lactate threshold. These workouts aren't just running hard for the sake of running hard. They train your body to produce, process, and burn lactate as fuel at a greater rate. This can improve your stamina over short and medium duration races like the 5K and 10K. You can even implement specific workouts to help you practice clearing lactate. I've included a link in the comments below with some example lactate clearance workouts, so you go ahead and check them out. Third, you can teach your body the skill of pushing through the pain. There is still an inescapable fatigue that comes with acid overload. There really is no getting away around this in shorter races. You can run hard interval workouts in races to improve your ability to buffer the acid produced when running at very fast speeds. But everyone is ultimately limited by the acidity in their muscles and blood. To help better prepare you, try implementing an interval technique called AMRF intervals, which will teach you how to push through this fatigue. And once again, check out the comments below to see some examples of hammer intervals that you can implement into your training right away. So what's the final word on lactate and lactic acid? So is there such a thing as lactic acid production during exercise? Not really. Your body certainly produces acid during exercise and it produces lactate as well, but it's the former, not the latter, that's the main culprit for fatigue. Regardless, it will likely still be a long time before we stop hearing about lactic acid buildup and so on. The fuss about terminology might be overblown, but understanding the real mechanisms at work when we run hard and get tired can help us understand the purpose and importance of the various workouts you use in your training. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching and hope you have a great run today.